my talk, which name is Deployment is not the end. My name is Vladimir Orani. I work for the company called Agorapools, which is a proud sponsor of GreatCon as well. Sorry? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it was very kind, so you have to be kind. <laughs> cool. So what we do, we do social management tool with the same name, Agorapools. You can manage Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. So we are just still still startup. So we try to do whatever we can in, um, in cloud. I think basically just just in Amazon. So this this is going to be kind of hands nearly hands on experience because some stuff on Tam Amazon takes way too long. So we, there will be some shortcuts, but I'm going to show you how to deploy your application to AWS Beanstalk either manually, then later with Gradle, and then we do. If you were to, for example, to Ryan's. Uh, talk yesterday, we do some AW, some Amazon-related Grails plugin, and we do also some uh, kind of monitoring-related Grails plugin. So, for example, we use this tool called Sentry for log monitoring, for error monitoring, and for monitoring the application performance, we use this tool called New Relic. So just a short disclaimer, I am not paying for that tool, so I know Sentry is quite cost-effective. New Relic could be more expensive if you really are a heavy user of it. But, and of course, Amazon costs something. So, let's go. So, if you can remember, there was the so favorite Groovy framework called Grails. Now everyone is in Micro now, but... <laughs> yeah, so, just to deploy something, I just created a sample application in Grails. So we just, you know, we SDK, use SDK man, and create new application, made some changes just to be able to run without the database. And you can just create a war. And the war can be easily deployed to AWS Beanstalk. So what is it? What is AWS Elastic Beanstalk? Who's using Beanstalk here? You? You? OK, so it will be more about sharing the pain. You can, you can face either than share the pain you already faced before. So yeah, you know, easy to use, service for deploying and scaling web, applica web application in Java, Go, Docker, so you can basically run there everything. So if you go there, you can just, you have to have your Amazon AWS account, sign up, and go to that, there's the console. Maybe I can just show you, and not let it finish. So just go here, create new application, and you can choose a platform. So for Grails, you usually package it as a war. There are some other options. You can package it as a jar. You can show it later on. And you can deploy sample application. I won't do it again. I already have one. So if I get back, OK, yeah. Just go there, create your own application, choose Tomcat, upload your file, which could be that war you've created right ahead. And you know, by default you have a very tiny in instance, but Grails is not micronaut, so you have to have at least, I don't know, two gigs of memory, so you have to change the instance type, which is kind of mix of uh, memory and number of processors it's available. So this is something you can run a yeah, small application, let's say, in beta production. And because now recently Amazon and have some constraints on uh, on the types and on networking. So who was on the Ryan sessions yesterday about the Amazon stuff? 
Yeah, so you know it. So now there's this thing called VPC. So it's kind of a virtual private cloud. So it's something which it should be, from security point of view, just yours. You shouldn't be uh, connected to other servers running there. And now this is the basic application you can get deployed over there, which is pretty easy just to do. I can do it, but it would take like 15 minutes or 10 minutes to do it from beginning. So, how to do it automatically? So, there is this nice thing called Cradle Beanstalk plugin. So you can just use this plugin to deploy automatically to, to Beanstalk. And it's really, really, really easy to set it up. So you just use the Beanstalk. This is the Gradle, Gradle notation, the latest one, to declare the dependency on the plugin. You, this is a node. So there will be a lot of code samples in here, which most of them you can later use if you take a look on the on the slides. I am not going to explain everything in here, but this is the way how, this, how you explain it. So just you have the deployment of a war, and this is the result of the war task, which is your artifact to deploy. Uh, this is what I've created, the application environment. So you have application and different environments, which could be you know, test, production, staging. So this is the concept of, of Amazon Beanstalk. And then I can just run, run a simple command from the command line, and it will fail because I haven't supplied the credentials. So I also have to define the credentials. And it's recommended just to have the one with programmatic access. Is it working? Can't find myself. Anyway, so we just use the one with programmatic access so no one can log in under that account, just can use it for the API. Assign it to some group with some role just to access the beanstalk. So, you know, you should pay a lot of attention to the security when you try to do something. And you get a f at the end, you get a file which contains the credentials which can be used, for example, to, to set up the AWS CLI. So, there's an AWS CLI, or you can just create manually the file containing the credentials. But this, this, is it going to work for you in a, you know three, two, actually two command lines. So you first install the CLI, then you say configure and fill in the the credentials. And then you can run the gradle task and it will work. So jar deployments. So this was the var deployment on Tomcat, which is pretty easy. And I have a discussion with Graham, so there shouldn't be a big difference about deploying Grails uh, as a VAR or JAR, but there are some frameworks like, I don't know, Micronow to a pack package by in JAR. So, have you been, have, you, have anyone been to Alvar's uh, workshop about Micronow? Yeah, so we have this club. We have this club um, service, or was it service, microservice. So what if we want to deploy this one? So I think we can, we can try to deploy the one we created yesterday. I'll just take the bit of help. Just the basic setup. So it packs uh, in the fed jar or shadow jar. I think it's collapse. Okay. So as I said, you can just go to the command line. Is it visible? Not really, it's a bit broken, so maybe I can try it from here. It may work. I don't know. The command line is some time to time broken from the... When I attach the external monitor. As you can see, deploy micro now. So fingers crossed. Mm. 
So I'm not sure if Graham would be happy if I'm doing this, but <laughs> it works. Yeah, so if you want to do it with, with Grails, you can do just a small change in the setting. You have to remove the war plugin and you have to dip, depend on assemble task. Okay, finished. Let's take a look. I have my clubs environment updating. Okay, so if I go there, bad gateway. <laughs> it's again. It's there. So it was just, you know, like I don't know. Then ten lines of code to automatically deploy micronaut application to Beanstalk. So, yeah, there was one trick I had to do. I probably haven't done it. So it has to run on the port 5000. So this is for Grails, for micronaut, you have to also do the configuration to run on the port 5000 because in Beanstalk, if you deploy the Java, uh, the Java application, it needs to run on the port 5000. Five okay, this is the setup. You just pick the different platform. Okay, here you don't need to do this for for Micronaut. It just runs in an instance you have. Cool, the deployments. So that was. Two options to deploy to deploy your application to Beanstalk. And for last one, I just pick this one. Um, so actually, who is this Grails developer? Here? Who uses Grails? Cool. So do you read the the guides time to time? They're awesome. So I just pick one, which is a Grails with file upload. And it's basically some things about restoration, restaurant catalog with point of interest or something like that. So I can take, so I've just deployed it already. Let's take a look. I have deployed it in here. Cool, so. So this was deployed, this the, that's, that's the one from the example I just deployed as a Java file uh, and uh, Java, on the Java platform. And it works perfectly, you know, in the in my in my environment. I can take a look. So, what does it do? For example, okay, there's some command. You just increase the size to upload files of 25 max, and there are other stuff. So, okay, so actually, this is the important stuff I want to explain. So, you should be able to uh, uh, upload 25 megabytes. It works happily in a, on your machine. And then you upload it to Beanstalk. Let's take a look. So if you restaurant. I tried to do a language Danish, but it's still English, sorry. So in your restaurant, let's say you have eat IT. And this is the point you can upload the image. So let's say you know everyone loves kittens, so uh, upload a kitten. So as a kitten, everything works. And what if you try to upload a different one? Um, scroll bar. So let's pick another one. And upload. Here we go. You know, it's typically, you know, it works on my machine thing. So if you if you're going to try to use and there is a there's the villain. Can you spot the villain? Here you go. It's that guy. So you know because if you do so you we should read this properly so you know. It was between the lines, you know. It's a kind of Java on engines behind. No dangings everywhere. So what shall we do? What shall we do to fix it? So luckily, uh, 
there is a way thing called uh, EB extensions, Elastic Beam extensions, which allows you to modify, to execute scripts, for example, to install some additional, additional libraries on the on the virtual machine on the virtual Linux. And one of the things you can do is you can alter the NGX configuration. Yeah, so this is, yeah. When I showed this presentation to my colleagues, they just told me, you have to, you have to tell, me, tell more stories. So that was a horrible story. I just have the Vertex application, which was working on my machine. And I just deploy it, and just people start complaining, OK, we have this 502 all the time. What's happening? And actually, it was you know like not enough workers and engines. Now you can see the very easy thing is the to have the problem with file uploads. And I think if you Google top ten problem with engines, you will face it if you deploy it to Beanstalk. But you know it's it's a it's a challenge. It's not a problem. You can find a solution. Okay, and if you done it, you have to do something different. So this is the zip deployment. You have to. Basically, instead of just deploying the jar, you have to deploy the zip containing the EB extensions thing with the Nginx configuration. And if I can, I can do a switch. Okay. Yeah, I need to cheat because it's a bit slow. I can do, I can do this one. Example. Deploy. will take a while so we can continue. So log monitoring. So the problem is now if you go to if you go to Beanstalk, if you deploy to Beanstalk, or probably it could be very similar if you use any other any other cloud platform as a service. <sighs> the way how to get notified by errors could be limited. So for example if you want to find out what's happening you have to go into into these logs um, and just fetch basically the logs from the Linux server and take a look what's happening. But it's kind of you know it's it's reactive because you know user is complaining, hey I wanted to upload the image and it's failed. What happened? And you go to logs, try to find it and anyway. So I have a question for you and I just check if it's loaded already. Still deploying. Now oh, it's there. So the question is: This is a very simple, very simple application which only have one domain classes and scaffolded stuff. So, do you have some favorite way how to break this simple application? Anyone? I have one. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Okay, so you know there are some magical numbers in computing, like two, five, six. And if we generate a string and try to paste it somewhere, for example. Okay, I just put there. Um, there's a Spring security now. I will explain why, but okay. Oh. So someone just forgot to put the constraints on the string property of name, and it fails because it just takes the database default. By the way, there's a nice thing about the Hacker Gardens. We created code narc through yesterday for this. So now, if you use code narc in the next release one dot two, you should get notified if you forgot to apply this size or max size on a string property. But anyway, what happened? So what happened? Uh, something bad happened. So what do you do? Who's using Slack in work? You're not using Slack that much? Yeah, just a couple of guys. So you know, sl it seems to me Slack is everywhere now. Okay, so what's on my Slack? Oh, sh okay, so something went wrong happened. So now I just 
the version just deployed is using this center thing. And what it does, it basically you can, uh, most of the implementation uses kind of log appender. So it just appends the, watch your logs. And if there is certain level you configure, it just sends it somewhere as an event. So you can see and just get bootstrap. This is thing I just set up. Okay, and now there is an error, so okay, just ignore it. Okay, well, it's not a good option. So I can assign it from here as well to my cell doesn't have so let's resolve it. Okay, now so this is how the usual day looks like. We just go to Slack, see the errors and try to figure out <laughs> what to happen. So, but just take a look, look back theory. Okay, so this is how we can break your application. Just, if you just hate someone, some company, just go to their application, try to paste long string somewhere, and they will just scratch their head for a while. So, this is what I've shown you. There's a new nice Slack integration. And how is this implemented? So, I've just used the Grass application. So, this is one of the plugins we're developing. And it's the center integration, so basically out of the box if you use the plugin. So I think you have to declare the dependency and put there some magic magic uh, token called DSN, which can use get somewhere from the configuration in Sentry. And if you deploy it so exactly yeah, this is just just the thing. So this is just one line of code and so five lines of code and you just get get notification in your Slack and you, you know what's going wrong in your application. And I think Sentry is pretty pretty nice um, payment model. So it's like 10,000 events a month for free. So I think you all of you have, you know, like application result and the errors. So if you have no errors, you don't report anything, you can use it for free. Cool. Okay, so you have to go to the configuration and set the set the secret somewhere. And you can see the result. And this is other thing, so if you're using Spring Security in the Regress application, you can you know with just so one line you can enable Spring Security in here. And if you return there. So actually no, it was the user admin who made a, made that error. So you just say, okay, you shouldn't put, you know, that long strings in there. We are not ready for it. And you can see, you know, the, this is probably the IP from here from Copenhagen. Yeah, some, you know, more, more, more details. So, okay. So next thing is the APM, the application performance monitoring. Uh, so we're using this tool called New Relic. And I know there are some, uh, so you can probably check some of the alternatives. I think Datadoc, Upscale, maybe some others. So yeah, this this be could cost you more, but it's I think it's worth. So what, what does it give you? It just gives you some kind of, you know, like nice graphs. You can, you can watch all day, like how many request per minutes or what is the throughput of the app and and you know what's nice you can supply if you supply enough data you can build a really nice dashboard so this was the from the vertex application so you can see I've just basically put together vertex data engines data this is also from vertex from some metrics so you can just build it yourself. I think you, you can run it in the kiosk mode. So you, can, you know, I don't know. You can just send it to your wall. So how to do it with Grails? It's a bit more complicated. We also have a plugin for it. And there are some, if you're still in GSPs, you can get this injected. You can use this useful tags. But there are also integration to, you know, Angular, React, Vue, whatever is fancy now. So we already have the zip zip deployment, which is nice. So, but we have to have quite a lot of more files, and I think you can just 
take a look later on. So you need the license key, set it somewhere. And yeah, that's it. So this is some kind of configuration you can use to to get this running. Okay, maybe I missed some important. <laughs> this is what I just want to stop. So there's one thing. So if you are running uh, your Java, if you're running the Java environment on Beatstock, you can you you can also define this thing called pros file. And it just declares what processes are being fired. So I don't know if it's a good idea, but you can actually have more of them. But one needs to be called web. But maybe if you, it's a bad idea, just send like five microservices on one server. But in theory, you can just, you know, fire here like five processes instead of one. OK, so New Relic is running. So I will cheat again a bit. Actually, did I? I sure it's fixed. I don't think so. So what's next? In like okay, I just need to deploy some different version which is actually configured this new relic. It's still updating. Uh, never mind. Okay, so there are some data. So you can see transaction time, throughput. The other thing which you can do is you can actually plug in the, you know, you can see kind of service. So you have the browser, like front end, back end, and, um, and databases. You can peek into the SQL queries so you can see, you know, which which database operations are taking the most of the time. And you can see JVMs, so if you if you have some out of memory question uh, problems, you can just take a look what's happening. You can see it, it's coming, and you can even profile the JVM remotely with New Relic. This is the front end stuff, so you can see you know like angry visitors, I don't know, it's like angry clicks or something. Um, so you have the. Uh, this is if you would like to use this infrastructure. So what does it mean that you can also monitor, you know, the CPU memory usages, not just of the application but also of the server itself. And you can monitor this ugly beast engine. So you can go to. You can see what uh, Nginx is doing. Okay. Yeah. So you could probably see here, you know, like if you were running all the workers, as I said before, so you could see, you know, like a lot of errors here. So some other configuration you can use later on if you, if you want to try it yourself. And the last thing, I think I lost the connection or something. Okay, yeah, the pictures are weird, so I guess the connection is pretty bad now. Anyway, so there is the Derp Wizard metrics plugin, which is a bit hidden now. Uh, do you, everyone is using anyone is using Derp Wizard or the Derp Wizard metrics? 
So it seems to be kind of standard now. So what you can use, you can use this plugin to install, to basically enable metrics inside your application as a drop visit metrics. And uh, then you can use this uh, metrics New Relic library to publish it to New Relic. And this is the one reported from the library, which basically the metric register is the thing from the plugin. It exposes everything measurable. There's some interface inside the um, application context. And you can publish it to New Relic with this reporter for every every minute it's going to publish some, some useful reports. Okay, and you can, for example, say this is also from the plugin, so you can say you want to measure how many times the upload upload feature image method was called. And then again, you can see it in a in an explorer to build a dashboard. So this thing called insights. I need to explore. Uh, sorry. Metrics. Application. This is the my application. So actually, there are, I've I tried, and they, they are pretty, pretty interesting uh, metrics by default. So actually, it monitors all the uh, GORM calls. So for example, you can take a look how many times the how many times the user list has been called. What about something next? No, I don't have enough data. So we'll just stick back with the, yeah, so for example, how many times the restaurant, say for update, has been called, you can, so this is something which is created by default, by the plugin, because it's already measured uh, by Spring or in Spring context. This is some custom one, and as I said, you can just build a, build a fancy dashboard. So for example, okay, you want to, let's say, see some correlation with this. So, okay, this was caught twice, this was caught once, whatever, you know. I think the vertex example was much better, because it's the real one. Okay, so actually I just managed this pretty fast. So, just time for questions, if you have any. Sure. Sorry? Uh, micrometer? I don't know. But you know, it's the, I think the metrics are quite generic. There's the library which uses the drop wizard. Uh, I picked this one, as I said, because I have the problem with Vertex application. And then there is a Vertex reporter to metrics to drop wizard. So I just you know, take the drop wizard metrics from Vertex and publish it using this reporter. But maybe you can find for that other metrics uh, some kind of tool as well, or maybe oh, you would have to write it. Any other question? Okay, in that case, thank you.